Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Harmonic Distortion with Rodian Schwartz FSW. In this presentation, we'll show you how to measure harmonic distortion using a Rodian Schwartz FSW series spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of spectrum analyzer operation and harmonic distortion measurements. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation and or Understanding Harmonic Distortion Measurements before beginning this presentation. As you should already know, harmonic distortion can be quantified in two ways. The first is the amplitude of the individual harmonics. These are normally reported as powers relative to the fundamental, so units are typically dBc or decibels down from the fundamental carrier. In this example, the amplitude of the fundamental is measured as an absolute power in dBm, but the power of each harmonic is reported in dBc relative to this power. The other way that harmonic distortion is quantified is as the combined power in multiple harmonics relative to the power of the fundamental. This is referred to as total harmonic distortion and can be reported either as a percentage or in dB. There are two ways of measuring harmonic distortion on the FSW. The first is measuring the harmonics manually using markers. The second is using the FSW's automatic harmonic measurement function. Let's start by explaining the manual process. The standard spectrum markers on the FSW can be used to measure the levels of the fundamental and the harmonics. In this case, markers are normally configured as delta markers to show the difference in level relative to the fundamental. In this example, the second harmonic is about 37 dB down from the fundamental, the third harmonic is about 53 dB down, etc. Note that this method does not automatically calculate total harmonic distortion, which is a somewhat non-trivial task. Another drawback to the manual method is that it's both very time-consuming and prone to error or measurement inaccuracy. Therefore, the FSW's automatic measurement procedure is recommended when measuring harmonic distortion. This function uses zero span mode to measure the level of the fundamental and then each user specified harmonic individually. Parameters such as the resolution bandwidth and measurement time can be either manually or automatically defined. We'll cover this in much more detail in a few moments. At the end of the measurement, the FSW displays both the levels of the individual harmonics as well as the automatically calculated value of total harmonic distortion. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go step by step through how to configure and use this automated measurement. On the FSW, harmonic distortion is one of the standard spectrum mode measurements. Just press the measure hard key and select harmonic distortion from the list of available measurement types. The parameters needed for a harmonic distortion measurement include the number of harmonics we want to measure, the sweep time or measurement time, and whether or not the resolution bandwidth should be automatically adjusted. We'll come back to these last two parameters momentarily. Pressing the Adjust Settings button causes the FSW to automatically search for the peak, that is, the fundamental. The FSW will then use this frequency to calculate the frequencies of the harmonics. And, as with most FSW measurements, the Display Config button can be used to select how the measurement results are displayed, that is, in a trace, in a table, etc. Recall that the FSW uses zero span mode to measure the fundamental and each of n user defined harmonics. In this example, measurements are made up to the eighth harmonic. The harmonic sweep time parameter defines how long each zero span measurement is made. Longer sweep times improve accuracy, but will also increase overall measurement time. The FSW therefore displays the cumulative measurement time, that is the time required to measure at the fundamental and at the defined number of harmonics. This is simply the number of harmonics times the measurement time, and the value is displayed in the FSW's channel bar. Here, for example, 400 milliseconds for eight harmonics with a measurement time of 50 milliseconds each. 
Another important setting in harmonic distortion measurements is the resolution bandwidth, which can be set manually or automatically. As a general rule, the resolution bandwidth should match the width of the harmonic. Here, the green shaded area represents the width of the resolution bandwidth filter. Using too wide of a resolution bandwidth, as shown here in red, will result in surrounding noise being added to the measured power of the harmonic. Another thing to keep in mind is that harmonic width increases with increasing harmonic order. For example, the third harmonic of a signal is usually three times wider than the fundamental. Therefore, the resolution bandwidth should be increased with increasing harmonic order. We'll cover this on the next slide as well. And finally, remember that higher order harmonics may have very low amplitudes, and in this case, it's particularly important to choose a resolution bandwidth such that noise does not affect the results. For example, measuring the fifth harmonic with a five megahertz resolution bandwidth gives a power of about minus 54 dBc. By using a five kilohertz resolution bandwidth, we get a power of minus 70 dBc. The FSW will automatically scale the resolution bandwidth for each harmonic if harmonic RBW auto is enabled. In this case, the target resolution bandwidth for the nth harmonic is the resolution bandwidth of the fundamental times n. For example, if the fundamental uses a 100 kilohertz resolution bandwidth, then the second harmonic will use 200 kilohertz, the third harmonic will use 300 kilohertz, etc. However, Keep in mind that spectrum analyzers normally only allow resolution bandwidth to be set in certain steps. So, if the target resolution bandwidth is not available, the next largest resolution bandwidth will be used. The RBW for the fourth harmonic should be 4 times 100, or 400 kilohertz. But since this is not a standard resolution bandwidth step, the resolution bandwidth is bumped up to 500 kilohertz. Resolution bandwidth stays at 500 kHz for the fifth harmonic, and then increases to the next available step, 1 MHz, for the sixth harmonic. Note that if harmonic resolution bandwidth auto is disabled, then the same resolution bandwidth will be used for the fundamental and for each harmonic, regardless of order. In the measurement results, each zero span is separated by red vertical lines. In this screenshot, we see values for the fundamental, second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics. For the fundamental and for each harmonic, the values for frequency, resolution bandwidth, and the measured power are provided in a table. In addition, total harmonic distortion, or THD, is automatically calculated for the measured harmonics and is given both as a percentage and in dB. One potential source of measurement inaccuracy comes from the fact that harmonics can sometimes be generated within the spectrum analyzer itself. When the device under test or DUT signal enters the spectrum analyzer, it first passes through a passive input attenuator, but it then passes through numerous active devices, such as mixers and amplifiers. Like all other active devices, these can create harmonic distortion. An easy way to check if this is happening is to use input attenuation. Normally, about 10 dB of attenuation is added, and the measured second harmonic level is observed. If the harmonic is exclusively from the dot, its level will remain constant. However, if the harmonic originates exclusively from within the analyzer's active components, then attenuating the input signal by 10 dB will reduce the measured harmonic level by approximately 10 dB. And if the harmonic originates from both, its level will be somewhat reduced by adding input attenuation. Let's look at an example. Here are the levels of the harmonics without additional attenuation. Note, in particular, the level of the second harmonic, minus 47.5 dBc. When 10 dB of attenuation is added, the level of the second harmonic changes by less than 1 dB to minus 46.14 dBc. So in this case, we can say that the analyzer is adding little to no harmonic distortion to the measured signal. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodin-Schwartz FSW series of signal and spectrum analyzers can automatically measure and report harmonic distortion, both for individual harmonics 
as well as the total harmonic distortion created by a set of harmonics. Harmonic distortion power measurements of the fundamental and defined harmonics are made in zero span mode using a configured resolution bandwidth and measurement time. In most cases, the user only needs to specify the number of harmonics of interest, although additional parameters can be manually or automatically defined as well. And finally, note that attenuation can be used to help determine if the measured harmonics are being generated within the spectrum analyzer itself. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Harmonic Distortion with the Rodian Schwartz FSW. If you'd like to learn more about Spectrum Analyzer measurements or the FSW, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.